All right, I have Chris DiPerno. How you doing, sir? How you doing there, Adam? Good, good. Thank you for being on. I appreciate your time. No problem. Glad to be on with you. Let's uh, let's go ahead and tell everybody about your background, and we'll uh, we'll move forward from there. Well, my my background is I um, I'm a retired uh, major crimes detective, and um, I did 25 years in law enforcement. Before that, I did uh, four years with the U.S. Marine Corps, and my skills in uh, in major crimes was interview and interrogation. Uh, I probably interviewed probably thousands of people, and um, then uh, started working as the uh, field investigator for MUFON in New York, and then became the assistant director here. Excellent. That's uh, that's quite that's some credentials. <laughs> that's oh, sick. thanks. It's well, good. No, it's good. I uh, it's, it comes with some heartache too. I, I'm sure. I just interviewed a detective last night, actually. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, and that was related to uh, to crime and and uh, homicide. So mm-hmm. yeah, good, good to hear. Plenty of those. Yeah. So what um, what what piqued your interest in this subject as far as uh, UFOs go? Well, I was a skeptic. I didn't believe in it. Say, yeah, that's uh, what got me into podcasting. I. I I want to believe in it, and I'm getting into it more and more. Um, and I'm out of, and it's because of the 2017 videos from the military that really solidified it for me that that there's a potential. So yeah, that's that's the direction I'm in. But for you, you started as a skeptic. I did. I started. I thought it was a bunch of Huey. You know, I'm saying, yeah, okay. There's all this stuff lying around this guy's. You know, who are these wackadoodle people and stuff of that nature? So I said to myself, listen, I'm retired now. What, what better to investigate this thing that everybody's talking about? And, you know, some people are saying uh, it's nothing. Some people are saying it's religion. Some people are saying it's demons. Some people are saying it's people from other worlds and abductions and everything. I said, you know what? I'm going to treat a UFO investigation like I would a homicide investigation. I'm going to follow the evidence. Wherever the evidence leads me, that's what I'm going to report. So I joined MUFON. And became a field certified field investigator and got cases. And I started getting some cases that were very, very unusual. Um, they kind of gave me some cases that you really had to do some deep background in. But I was also getting cases from cops. They wanted to talk off the record and they say, hey, you were a cop. Hey, uh, can we talk to you about this? I go, yeah, sure. And they said, Chris, you know, we, we saw this and we chased this and, you know, we, we saw this to happen in a lake and everything. So I actually started investigating these things, actually started interviewing people, trying to follow the evidence, see what cor- correlated with each, each uh, sighting and stuff. And from a skeptic, I turned out to be a believer. I go, yeah, there, there, there's no question in my mind that we're being visited by something of not, of we don't know. I mean, probably from that of this earth. Right. I mean, I look, I don't disagree. Uh, I have, a, and I say this theory to some of the, the UFO buffs. My theory is that they're really advanced, the gray alien anyways, a really advanced robot with the consciousness uploaded to it and that we're under a long-term study. Well, you're pretty close, Adam. Actually, it's an organic type of uh person, I guess, is the best way to say it. What we believe the greys are from the studies I've gotten, the information I've gotten from people, you know, they had an alien at uh, S4 at Area 51. And when they were studying this alien, they had to bring in botanists. And they realized that this was more of an organic plant type material that they were dealing with with this gray as opposed to a humanoid type of, of structure. Huh, that's interesting. You know, it's not far from what I, I, I hear a lot, right? I, I do a lot of off-podcast interviews. Mm-hmm. Uh, on podcasts, I've had a lot of MUFON people, some other buffs. And, uh, you know, my theory is based on imagination. Uh, I have no science to my background whatsoever. Uh, I shoot pool, right? So, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I love shooting pool too. I was a pool, pool yeah. player. So time. when I first got involved with this and, and, you know, obviously COVID gave me the downtime and my childhood imagination and my curiosity matched together. And I came with these wild theories, but as I, I you know, I'm, and I'm not solid on anything. I have no position on anything. Uh, I'm dude, I could evolve. My opinion will evolve. And as I'm talking to you and others, it's starting to evolve. 
Um, it's it's pretty common. I'm hearing now that this is more like a biological material, maybe over something else. Is that? I, well, as I say, their structure is completely different. If you're talking about the actual grays, well, first of all, there's probably about 84 different species that have visited us from what we can gather as far as information. So, I mean, but the b- biggest common one is the grays. Right. But we know that from our studies and everything that we know that the grays aren't the bosses. They're, they are actually, if you look at Travis Walton's abduction, They were actually controlled by a humanoid looking person that uh, probably you would classify as a Nordic and uh, other species or other alien types have also used this type of uh, creature, the greys, to do to do work. So they're kind of like worker bees. Right. And what we discovered and what we've gotten information on uh, that's leaked out is that you know, they absorb nutrition through their skin. They excrete uh, stuff through their skin. Their skin is a, a big thing, like, like almost like a plant. And they, when they went to study this, they, ha- they had to bring in completely different idea because they thought, oh, well, we're going to see about their lungs, their liver, their this and that. And they kind of developed and said, wait a minute, these things are possibly grown as opposed to being born. You know, I'm hearing a lot of that. It's not just, you know, I, this isn't the first time I've come up. I've heard it uh, on podcasts and a lot off podcasts. And some of the people off podcasts are scientists and they don't want to be on the show for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, which hopefully soon that's that, that wall will come down, right? Because it's silly. Well, I mean, Adam, actually what the government has already done is they cr- are creating an actual unclassified office. Uh, like they did years ago with Project Blue Book. Now, I don't think it's going to be run the same, but they got an actual office that will be investigating what they call UAPs, Unidentified Aerial, aerial Phenomenons. They don't like to use the word. Yeah, they, they kind of have no choice there. I mean, that's our military seeing that. It's game over, oh, right? You can't, there's no cover, there's no swiping that away. Adam, um, we have much more video than what's been put out. The video that's been put out by the military is just not even the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more that they are probably going to re- release down the road. They're just, you know what they're doing? They're doing like anything else. They don't want to give us a full meal once. Right. Because it's going to be hard to digest. So they're kind of giving us to us a little bit at a time so we can kind of digest this idea that we're not alone in the universe. Yeah, I, I, read, a, uh, I read something from the 80s. Uh, and it was a, fr- a French, someone in the French military, something to the nature of what well, we won't. And he said this in the 80s. We won't know exactly what it is we're dealing with well into the late 21st century. And that's because Probably. I think I think his I think hit the psychology behind that statement is, again, the impact on religion. social. And I mean, if you look at it socially, we're we're a terrifying creature socially. Pitiful. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I imagine those guys, when they come by our planet, they lock the doors on their cars or crash. Yeah, I mean, I mean? It, or, or we're just one of the best TV shows they've ever got to watch. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would have to agree with you, Adam. They probably look down and say, let's see what the Earthlings are doing now. Yeah, you They're got a bunch of crazy You got people. comedy, drama, murder, suspense. <laughs> it's just, it's insanity. You name it, we got it. But, you know, they, I, from what we gather, they look at us sort of like a, a laboratory. Because if, if the information's right, um, we believe one, one uh, species is probably 45,000 years more advanced than us. 45,000 you know, more years advanced than us. If you think about what you're saying, um, think about the ancient Greeks and some of the inventions they had. And mm-hmm. then think about when the Romans took over and Catholicism was in power and those inventions were kind of viewed as witchcraft or against the church. We're 2,000 years behind the ball on technology. Oh, I, th- I absolutely Can agree. you imagine where we would be right now if we had 2,000 more years behind us in, te- in technology? We'd, it'd be crazy what we'd be doing oh, right now. Oh, we wouldn't be using cars or anything else. I, I believe in the future because they're working, and we know the government is working on teleportation and uh, warp speed and how to compress time and space. Sure. But they're doing all that now. They're working on the theories to it. 
And if they get the theories down, got to remember the military is probably a hundred years more advanced than what we know about. So if we see something the military puts out, oh, look at this new aircraft or look at this new thing that they're, they're saying. Yeah, it's true. Their, because Their black projects are probably a hundred years plus more advanced than that. Yeah. Look, the F-A-22 Raptor was a black project in the 90s, right? Yeah. The the the, the uh, F-117 and, and B-2 were black projects in the in the late 50s, 60s. We didn't use them because we didn't need to use them. <laughs> so, you know, uh, when we investigate these cases, we could tell you with relatively certainty that probably 90 to 95 percent we can explain. We could we could look at the video. We could we have people who analyze video. We MUFON has a laboratory, and we have photo analysis people. We have great you know interviewers and. And we can look at it and probably 90, 95, we can explain, you know, that's a, a, a jet, that's a, a drone, that's this, because we have such a database, it's unbelievable. But that's a 5%, we can't explain. Yeah. I mean, I've seen the videos, I've seen the pictures, and we've had them analyzed, and we go, that's the real deal. We can't explain it. I keep drawing back to this, man, but when you hear David Fravor explain his experience, my goodness, there's what what better perspective is there you know what i mean <laughs> well what you what you probably didn't hear from fravor but i heard it from kevin day who was a radar operator there i had a one-on-one -on -one talk with him we sat down and had a beer together is that the uh tic tac was doing barrel rolls around fravor's plane he was screaming on the radio that this thing is doing barrel rolls around him and the thing, what they do is they have what they call uh, combat air patrol. Right. There are certain areas around the task force. These Tic Tacs knew exactly where these planes were going to be. They're, yeah. They're, that's impossible to know because not even the pilots know until they're, they're ready to launch and they take up their combat air patrol uh, designation. But the tac Tic Tacs were waiting for them. Yeah, that's... How do you go from 30,000 feet to five feet above the water in 0.02% of a second? You don't. Your head explodes if you're biological. <laughs> that's so, correct. I and mean, so and, and people say, well, maybe it's the Russians. Maybe it's the Chinese. No shot. So, Those guys yeah. would definitely. Listen, if I learned anything about Russians and, and the Chinese, they if they had that technology, there's nothing we could do. They would rub that in our face. Period. Absolutely. Yeah. The world would be a different place right now. Right, but if you remember World War II, right, the the Russians didn't have a plane in the sky, right, and and the and the same thing with the Chinese. Remember the yeah, that's a good the, point. Uh, the flying tigers had to go over there and defend their uh, air airspace because they didn't have a plane. So we were seeing UFOs back in World War II called the we dubbed them Foo Fighters. So we know it's not the Russians. We know it's not the Chinese. We know it's not any nation on this planet. Yeah, there's no shot. Because right. if that were the case, my phone would never break. It'd be perfect. You know what I mean? So it's, it's <laughs> but, I, I can't, what I, do, what I do think is if you hear what's going on afraid with the other pilots and, and military installments and, and, and nuclear plants, that's exactly the type of thing we would do if we found, like, again, let me give you this scenario. And I say it a lot. You and I are walking in Central Park. We stumble across an ant pile, and they're flying airplanes, they're driving cars, they're throwing bombs at each other. We're closing that park off. We're watching that forever. And we would want to see how they would evolve, not just as a species, but their technology. And, we, you know, we'd sit back and watch that. And if you keep things at scale, like if they had nuclear bombs, we still probably wouldn't intervene because to scale, the best they're going to do is like, a, like two or three feet of damage, right? Considerably oh, I think city. you're right on the mark, exactly what you said. I, I couldn't say it any better than that, Adam. I think exactly that what you said. They're watching us. They're observing us. They look at us like we're a dolphin or like we look at a dolphin or a whale. Let's study these creatures. We know they're pretty smart, but they have these unusual tendencies. Let's study them. Let's tag them. Let's see what they're all about. Yeah. Well, they're, we're no different to them. We're, we're, like you said, an ant farm that... It can, can fly and, and do little things that bring us to their attention. Jim Mars said it best. They, I think they took notice of us when we uh, let off the first atomic bomb. 
where Jim Mars' uh, hypothesis was, you know what? The, uh, they're thinking the kids have found the matches. Yeah. I think that would and be that, a, that would be a flag for them for certain. Oh, I, absolutely. I, I have a, I have a, the power of the sun. I have another idea. I think would grab their attention. To be honest, is, you know, if you look at biblical times, there's there's speech of it that they saw this in biblical times, and the ancients speak of them. The, I think it's when we started using an alphabet is when they really like. All right, the ants have figured it out. Let's see where they go now, right? Because if, I think I think that's part of it. I I think that's a great theory uh, to look at because if you look at how languages have evolved uh, when we started, uh, you, you know, with the Sumerians and everything else, we've we've kind of vowed that, and that would be part of the study of studying us, right? You know, they study not only our biological nature and yeah, our, our environmental very- nature and how we, we act and socialize. And maybe because of the way we are, he says, we're, they're not ready for us. Because the truth of the matter is, and I've talked to military people, I've talked to government officials and stuff like that. And one of the things that keeps popping up is everybody saying, well, I wonder if we're ready. If we let it out, how do we do this? Where, because there gets so much excitement with people when everybody says, Hey, the alien, I don't know if you yeah. ever heard of the professor over in Israel or, but here's the uh, problem. Dr. Though. Here's the problem. We're not ready. And I say this not because not all of us are, I mean, there's a lot of like-minded people like yourself and there's, there's UFO buffs and believers, but we still have racism. We we're still certain countries treat women like they're not even people. Still, we still have, what? We still have divides by religion and politics. There's no shot that we're not we're not a species that's working as a species yet. Ants do better in that department. What would you think if a person came out and said, a high government official says, aliens are real and they're living among us and you wouldn't even know? How many people would grab a shotgun, run out the door, thinking that their neighbor's now an alien? They no said, I knew it all along. Yeah, I wouldn't but do it. You know as crazy as that sound? You know it would happen. No, absolutely it would happen. There's very close-minded, primitive-minded people out there. It's scary. You, you, know? you have to – this is not a topic that you can just – and I believe this. This is not a topic you can just go out and say, hey, they're walking among us. They've been here for years. They could be your neighbors or anything because people will react different to it. Some people will say, that's great. You know, Maybe they'll come out and we can join them together. Or learn but, something from I, them. I, I don't think our society is ready for no, that because see, we can't get along with ourselves, right. let alone to get along with a, a, a civilization or a hybrid or some bit of another planet. Yeah, my perspective is this. Uh, I grew up in a Catholic home. I didn't really understand racism until I was in my teens, and it wasn't something I you know, obviously didn't learn it from my family. You know, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican-Italian mixed, so race to me, now, I just it didn't compute. I grew up in Brooklyn as a kid. So... I, my views now are, if you want a religion, humanity, if you want a race, human, if you want a place to call home, earth, we're all, we're, we should really, until we start thinking that way, we're not going to, even hypothetically speaking, an advanced alien force is watching us. I don't think that they would want to communicate with us on a broad spectrum until we come to that, that kind of scenario where we're all one species. Cause God, if you, if you ever want to see the the horrid misconduct of a human, go on social media and you'll see it. It's terrible. <laughs> so, well, I, I, you know, like we we discussed earlier, if you're forty five thousand years more advanced, they're not looking at us saying, "Well, you know, let's go down there and share our technology with them," because they see what we do with technology. Right. Yeah, anything and we so, have weaponized. Why anything. would you give that stuff to them? I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I, it's it's tough. I, I'm a different kind of person, and you know, through these podcasts, and as you get to know me, you're gonna. I'm that guy that's gonna run it. Like if I there, there's an alien in the house, I'm gonna talk to it or try to. If it doesn't render me unconscious, do whatever. Otherwise, but I'll look. I'm so, I'm not above talking. Like let's do what you want. Probe me. I want to learn. Teach me something. You know, um, ghost would probably be the draw for me because what do you do about one? I said this a lot too. I don't even think about demons or horrible ghosts. I think about the ghosts that would sit in your room and just sing a, the same boring song all night. You know, so. <laughs> well, well, I, I got to tell you, I, Adam, I've, I've, I have a great friend who sees ghosts all the time, 
and he's a 20 year army veteran. Um, he's did five, five tours in Iraq and in Afghanistan. And this guy is level headed, but all his life he's seen ghosts. And if he, if he tells me something, I believe it. Yeah. Now I have never seen a ghost. Nor have I. And uh, I've had bad feelings in certain houses, you know, you ever, but in that house where you go, Oh, this is, there's no good energy in this place. Yeah. You know, it sucks because I've never seen anything other than the one orb I saw in the sky, but it was consumed by a storm. I'm never going to know what that was. I'm, my imagination will torture me forever about it, but I feel like I'm unlucky. You know what I mean? Because well, <laughs> I, 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 I actually saw a UFO about two years ago. I was taken to a place by a police officer. Right. Um, and uh, they were having sightings down in the Hudson Valley area. And he called me up and he says, hey, listen, I, I'm going to tell you this story, whether you believe me or not, I don't care. But here's the deal. And he explains to me how he watched this triangle over the lake. And they've been having sightings over this certain lake down Hudson Valley area of New York. And he says, we spot the same thing probably, you know, two nights a week. And different cops on the night shift always see it. And it's gotten to be a, a routine. And it's not a plane. It's not a drone and stuff. I says, you know what? And I told the guy, I says, I'm going to come down and I'll see. I'll call, you know, I'll call his bluff and, and see what it is. So I drive down and uh, we go out and we sit on the dock. And I'm kind of waiting. I go, man, this is a waste of time. You'll probably tell me, well, it didn't come tonight or whatever. But you know what? There comes this orb silently over treetop level, just treetop level. It wasn't a plane. There was no collision lights on it, no FAA lights on it, nothing. Just a bright white orb, and it comes right over treetop level, and it starts to hover right over the lake. And it's just, and I'm going, is is it can't be? And I mean. I'm fumbling like a school a schoolhouse kid trying to get my camera out of my pocket. Yeah. Right. Because I'm so amazed because of the, the action of this thing. And then Adam, in a blink of an eye, boom, straight up, gone. Man. And, and I go, all right, that wasn't a plane. It sure how wasn't a drone. No, no doubt. It wasn't a Chinese lantern. And he and I looked at him and he goes, see? And I went, okay. But the Hudson Valley area in New York has got so many sightings, so much mysterious stuff going on down there. I, I call it the Area 51 of the East Coast. You know, that's that's a good thing. You know, listen, I'm going to eventually, at about a year's time, I'm going to go out and do a documentary. And uh, that's why I talk to, to, you know, people like yourself. I'm going to build, like, this network so I can, I can figure out where the spots are to go. Because well, I live, the Hudson Valley. Hudson, because... I'll, there are things going on in the Hudson Valley that's part military, that's part scientific. People don't realize all the different things that we've discovered down in the Hudson Valley. Um, the people we interviewed. There was, a, there was a police pursuit of a UFO. There was a police pursuit. They were chasing it in squad cars. That's, that's nuts. You know, you know now, I hear that a lot, too. You think those guys are going to make that up and lose their careers? No. This was years ago, and I talked to the guys who pursued it, and the story that they told me was absolutely incredible. And they, they were radioing it, so they got it tape recorded, but they're radioing it into headquarters, saying that we are in pursuit of a UFO. Well, the dispatcher checked with the FAA. The FAA says, we don't have anything on radar. And the FAA president, well, they must be seeing Venus. So the dispatcher goes... Well, hey, listen, guys, I just checked with the FAA, the tower, and they said that uh, you're probably seeing Venus. And one of the cops go, well, Venus just went under the bridge. <laughs> and the park police officer who I know, he's, he's listening to this chase on the radio, and he tells me this directly. He says, I'm laughing my head off, and I step out of the car, and there it is hovering over my park police car. And takes off at an incredible speed. And there comes all the cars, like this big chase going on. And he goes, I, I'm laughing two seconds ago, thinking that this thing was nothing but a joke, you know. And now I actually see the damn thing. 
you know, how many, I, I know this isn't probably even close, but, and this is my, again, my childhood imagination, but how often is it maybe that these UFOs, they don't realize we're seeing them and they're like, holy shit, they see us, <laughs> you know, they take off. Like, I, if you think about the Phoenix Lights, every time I hear that story, the first thing in my mind is they're just slowly cruising the big ship over us, and we're all seeing it. And then, obviously, on board, one of them, like, oh, oh my God, can they see us? We got to go. We got to get out of here. You know what I mean? That's It well, sounds like that to me. It may be. That, that's a good possibility. We don't know why they – because we do know that – and this is something that I've been listening to for the last couple of years – but these, you know, the new military technology with night vision? Yeah. If you put those on, you will actually see more unidentified craft flying than you would with the naked eye. All right. So the so, scientist I'd spoken to off podcast, I won't say his name, I'm going to damage his rep for whatever reason, mm -hmm. come out, please, said the same thing. That night vision will give you the ability to not only just see UFOs, but... There's other things in the atmosphere you would otherwise not see with it. Like you would, an example would right. be you would be able to see the uh, the ISS flyover with night vision long before you would have the ability to see it with the naked eye. And there's a thing called rods, flying rods that we can't under under uh, uh, I, explain. I've been reading about those. Uh, there's a mix between it being moths, like their wings caught in a camera, and then there's this other. Um, there's a small group where they can't explain because it it's so high up in the atmosphere. It's way up in the sky. That's a subject I'm having. I, I'm going to dive into that and uh, see what I learned from that. Well, remember we were talking, uh, everybody was talking about that a few years back. And now what? what's the military come out with? Hypersonic missiles. Yeah, I now, just I heard about they that. they were testing hypersonic missiles years ago, and we were thinking it was rods. Well, everything that's happening now that we're hearing, if we're hearing about it now, we've been testing it for a long time. Very long. Oh time. yeah, yeah. They're, they're, we don't just announce something or, or make it known without it being tested thoroughly for a decade. So, yeah, undoubtedly could be. I mean, you know, that's another thing too. If our military were participating and they had craft or were doing the things that are, you know, these other things are alleged to do, I don't know that they would interfere with like expensive fighter pilots while they're in flight. I don't think they would do that. That's that's these are big investments you're toying with. Yeah, but uh, I, that's the thing, is that when I talk to Kevin Day, because one of the first things is, Kevin, what makes you think that these Tic Tacs weren't an experimental uh, American aircraft that you guys, he says, no way, there's no way. He says, first of all, we don't have anything. He says, listen, I have one of the highest clearances there is because I work on the most sophisticated radars. But in order for that to do that, it would never be done over water with a, a battle group because the stuff they were doing is considered an act of war. Right. Yeah. And they don't want, they, people would go to jail for a very long time if it was ever discovered that they did stuff like that. He says, first of all, their capabilities were nothing I've ever seen before. That's number one. Number two, they wouldn't endanger the pilots and things contrary to popular belief they still wouldn't do it because that that's one of the things they try to stay with well, that's, that's a, why that's they a, have areas it's a major people. investment you know, what is it like a 20 million dollar plane and a pilot's training alone's in the millions yeah. you know what i mean that's it's a big investment yeah. to toy around with right and you know i if they're controlled by human i mean obviously we know we have such advanced we probably have replicated one of these uh, down crafts i'm sure by now we've gotten somehow the ability to reproduce it uh reverse engineered it and stuff but i mean still i don't think we're at the point where you know we got their their type of sports car model yet right i'm glad you said that too by the way a lot of people cut they, they throw dirt at the, the uh, subject because like oh there's never consistently what they look like look we have cars and vans and buses and trucks. They all sure. have different purposes. They, they can have the same, you know, the different, mo newer models, nicer models. The one with the new one with the new radio in it. You know what I mean? Like, you have yeah, room for well, that. different species. Well, here's one of the things that um, we've been studying. You know, years ago, you know, you had all these crashes in the 40s and the 50s and, and the 60s. There was UFO crashes, and one of the things that were speculated is that when it hit Doppler radar, 
it disrupted the amplifiers. You know, Bob Lazar talks about these crafts having amplifiers and that you move the amplifiers and it disrupts the gravity. But the Doppler radar may disrupt that. And if it disrupts that, that's why possibly that these things are craft. Well, well you're an advanced species, right? You right. realize, say, hey, these guys got this radar and it's knocking down, you know, this model. Let's make a new model. Right. Because you don't see the old type flying saucers anymore more of them now are the bright orange bright white orbs the tic tacs the triangles uh the rectangles those are the most popular ones now you're not seeing the disc shaped ones as often as we used to back years ago yeah it's like the one bob lazar describes that he saw that he drew back in the 80s is identical to the one that you see. I think it's the, the, the gimbal video where you see it like kind of rotate mm -hmm. and it even behaved exactly the way Bob Lazar described. Everything. You're right on the money. Can you imagine that they call this guy a crackpot, you know, 15, 20 years ago when he was talking about how he was researching the sports model and explaining exactly how element 115 was and nobody ever heard of Elf, element 115 so they didn't know what he was talking about or amplifiers and how they move and the craft has to move a certain way yep. and it has an aura around it right and we all saw it I mean, I hate, I hate to the t the way that thing behaved in that video is exactly how described in the 80s exactly. and even in recent times as and then here's the other part too, and this is kind of what threw, threw me down the road of maybe these are advanced, ro maybe they're advanced robots with the consciousness of the being uploaded. When he describes the internal uh, part of the the chip, it's buttonless, it's seamless, buttonless, no knobs, no buttons, no nope. you know, just two small seats. That's it. And then below, we're like this, uh, where I, I assume is the uh, the power source. Here's what? what Eric De Davis says. Eric Davis believes that it's all about consciousness. Um, ben Rich, you ever heard of Ben Rich? No, I haven't you, actually. I'll have to look him up. Ben, ben Rich was the head of Lockheed Martin's super secret skunk works. Okay. Yep. Now I know what it is. All right. So Ben Rich turned around and he was given a lecture. I think it was UCLA, either Berkeley or UCLA, somewhere in California. And he explains, and right during his lecture now, this is a guy who knows all the secrets when it comes to the ultra-modern aircraft of the world. And he goes, you know, we have the ability to take E.T. home now. And the whole place... Oh, you know what? Home. I just heard that. So, I, As you said that, I hit it. it I, again, I've been watching a lot of these shows, documentaries, and exactly how you phrase it. I literally just heard that on, uh, on a program not long ago. And the... But the amazing part was is they pressed him, a couple of people got him off to the side and pressed him and said, well, what do you mean? How, how did they do? And how does it work? And he goes, it's consciousness. It has to bind with consciousness. So when you say there's no knobs or anything, it's all about consciousness. The It's sort of like a, a mind melt between the instrument and the right. who's ever running the thing. So I'm going to give you a theory. Because as a kid, I, I remember hearing people, as, as a kid, I heard people discuss it. They speak with telepathy. They do things without contact. And then you get older and you see what we invent Bluetooth. And then you look right. back at, and then now you look at what Elon's doing. We're going to chip in ahead. You could communicate, no words needed. You could just have images in your mind. Who's this? Uh, this is our technology now. Their technology then, it might have been their version of Bluetooth. And as we perceive it as, as telepathy and exactly you're mm -hmm. saying no better way to connect to your direct consciousness and, and your ability to control things than a chip and head, right? They exactly right. They know that the mind works on electrical impulses. So if they can transmit those electric impulses from one person to another or put something in to stimulate those electronic impulses, you might be you are now gonna open up a whole new world. You'll be able to think something and the lights will come on or you'll turn on your computer or you'll start your car just by thinking it, you know? And, and I think that's where Elon Musk is going is he wants to be able to take artificial intelligence and put it with uh, uh biological intelligence. Yeah, that makes sense. And you know what? That guy, Elon, he's his, his mental advancement. is incredible. Like the, the ideas he comes with and even the car, 
the amount of stuff that guy gets done. That, you know, I've become a big fan of him recently because I learn oh, more and more. Isn't he, does. he great? I think he's great. Yeah, he's, he, he reminds me a lot of Nikola Tesla, and he's doing it in the name of humanity. He's not doing it. You're not. This isn't like you know. He's racing against Amazon. He's doing it in the name of humanity. Everything he's doing, it's pretty impressive. Well, I haven't seen him once build a weapon out of anything he's making. He's not interested in that, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately. SpaceX, yeah. Tesla, you know. I mean, Neuralink he took the name of Nikola Tesla for his company, which I think Nikola Tesla was probably one of the most brilliant human beings in the world. And they say that Nikola Tesla got a lot of ideas from people who are not from this world. You know, Nikola Tesla was very, he was so advanced for his time that I think it scared people. You know what I mean? I, I, oh, think, I, think, I, so. I think people shut him because I think he was talking about using electricity in the air to power homes. And yeah, yeah that's pretty impressive stuff. Yeah. Well, his theories now is proven. I mean, they, they actually, I watched it on a, a, a television show that they actually made a small model of what Nikola Tesla uh, was talking about theory wise. And it powered a boat. It powered a, a small little boat Crazy. across there. So it, it can be done. It, his theories were on the money, but a lot of his theories are locked up. Nobody knows who's got them. Because remember, when he died, they raided his place and they took everything. That's nuts, man. What? What? Moving forward, what do you think? Uh, what? Do you, how long? What's the timeline you have of when we're going to just? When, it's going to be public knowledge. They exist. They're real. Period. I think it's starting now. I think the, the with the Senate report, although it was really, um, everybody report. says it was a dud, we didn't get the whole report. Yeah, it was we, safe. Obviously. They, they stated the obvious and they played the narrative. It was smart. I mean, you know, my hat's off to them. They did they did what they could. Mm -hmm. But moving but they, moving forward, in your mind, in the next decade, we're gonna, we're gonna it's going to be public knowledge, you think? I think uh, toward the end of my my lifetime, I think the the next generation will be informed. Um, I think they they just want to work it out. They're working on how the, how to do it. I mean, they're investigating. Well, first of all, if you see, and this is what worries me, Adam, the narrative of the information is starting to change, and this is a little scary. You know, this is this is what I'm seeing. Remember years ago, they didn't even want to acknowledge it, and they kind of saying, ah, this is this and that. Now they're acknowledging it, but they're calling it a threat, a threat to our airspace. A that's, threat to our that's, national that's money, theory. though. You know that's money. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah we, need, we need to build something. We need rail guns. We need millions yeah. right now. <laughs> right. But you see, we're instead of saying, hey, listen, you know, this could be a great thing for humanity. Look at the narrative that's coming out with it. And and that and that puts some people in mind. Oh my God! Are they eating us? Are they using us for torture? Are they doing? You see, they they're planning certain things. So they say, well, we need billions and billions of dollars more because we might have to defend ourselves against space aliens. If they were smart, they would look at the time scale, right? You go back to there, and again, ancient times that there this was discussed. I think Christopher Columbus. If I'm, you know, don't quote me on this, but said something like he saw odd lights in the sky. Yeah. So all along again, back to like, let's say, let's use this analogy. We're watching these orangutans like, and they start speaking words and writing down their, their, you know, their vocabulary. And you're like, wow, let's just, let's watch. Don't bother them. Let's see how to go. And then if you look at the influx of, of more and more UFOs in the forties, because what did we do? Start blowing off bombs. So now, mm -hmm. You go back to the, the the orangutans, and we're watching like, oh, they're doing so great. They're, I mean, there's some comp they're, they're a complex society. There's some war, but we're not going to intervene. And then all of a sudden, boom, they blow a bomb. You're like, holy shit, they got bombs. And yeah, then the kids found the matches. Now you got to watch more thoroughly to not only make sure they don't off themselves completely because they're an interesting species of study, right? But we got to make sure they don't off us. We're here, <laughs> you know. So well, that's just it. I, they guys, they see us advancing where we're making you know, the power of the sun, and then we're putting it into space, we're putting it in the air, how far are they going to let us go until they say, uh, excuse me, uh, ladies and gentlemen, but this doesn't work for us. Yeah, I mean, eventually the intervention, I here's where I think if they do intervene ever, is now we have, you know, the, the hypersonic missiles, et cetera, 
I think the, at the point we start using concentrated energy and light at a focused target to do mass damage instantly, because if you think about what a light, what a laser from a, from a, let's say a, a satellite is, it's sure, direct instant. energy. Weapon. Yeah. There's no like, Hey, they launched a missiles warning. It's over. When we get to that point, it, if they're watching, that's when they intervene because that same energy could be turned and pointed at a nearby star system. And it might not be at the, the power of it, but it'll still have some effect when we've learned in science that atoms affected here are affected elsewhere. What would you say if I told you that we've been studying that for years? I'd believe it. I absolutely Because I'll tell you the reason why. Down the Hudson Valley area, and um, we can get into this on another show or whatever, they had one of the most secret laboratories in the world. And if uh, you want to take a look at it, you can look up a guy by the name of Alfred Loomis. He was a brilliant physicist and a billionaire. He built a super secret laboratory called the Tower Building, which actually had an underground bunker to it. And they were not only doing mind control experiments there, mind behavior, uh, how the mind works and stuff, but uh, one of the things that they discovered there was uh, during World War II, they brought over British scientists to work on radar. Well, at the same time, they were working on sonar. And as they were working on sonar, they developed a certain frequency, a certain wavelength that when they put in the water was frying all the fish. Yeah. I mean, they were zapping everything. No, there's, there's no so they, doubt that's that. Listen, that's real. I'll tell you why. Yeah. If I get I had a sinus infection. If you ever get a sinus infection, if you yeah. want to know how wavelengths and sounds at the highest pitch can affect you, have a sinus infection and hear just a high pitched anything that you may typically wouldn't hear. And it will destroy your head. You will have a headache horribly. You know, mm-hmm. look at the, effect, the effects of, of your equilibrium based on wavelengths and, and sound waves. And, yeah, it's, sure. un, it's undeniable. Um, I, it, it, the, the scary, I don't know, the scary part for me is if we were working on this or we did or we have it, you know, you got to wonder, what, what, there's got to be an application for human, like for people, right? How do we fix, you know, our energy crisis? Like we're still using fossil fuel, et cetera. That's the thing. I think if anything bothers me more, it's not so much with the government hides. Because let's be honest, we they have to hide some shit. They have to. Oh, of course. Because if we if our, if we just told everyone we were completely transparent, our enemies would know their war would not only increase, it'd be worse. <laughs> because they, right. well, now we got to crush them before they make better stuff. You know what I mean? They, let's let's get them now. So yeah, we have to hide things. It's unfortunate, and for people listening, I'm not completely siding with the government i think they could be more transparent on certain certain things but yeah there's no way they're going to let us have tours of area 51 they shouldn't you know we need that secrecy but at the same token <laughs> some of the stuff we're inventing should benefit us somehow well i th- and i think what the problem is that because the military funds a lot of this new experiment you got to remember they have their research and development they're connected with livermore labs they're connected with the rand corporation they're connected with you know lockheed martin and the military gives all these private corporations billions of dollars through their you know their uh secret projects and everything else and we need to tell you to break away from that and kind of say okay there are certain things that we can develop to, for us to be beneficial. Like you say, energy. There's no question in my mind that eventually we should be off of fossil fuels and have energy come right through the air like Tesla did. We know it works. Sure. The question is, is it profitable? Well, that's, How- yeah, that's cool. Yeah. When you get to that, yeah, I think the real reason we're still using fossil fuels is because of that. Yeah, exactly. Because if you remember... Tesla got shut down by one of the oil producers because he he was actually funded by one of them. And then when they said, "Holy crap, this stuff really works," hey, they're gonna they're gonna bankrupt if this guy is gonna bankrupt us. We better shut this down. And he was shut down. Yeah, that sounds right. I gotta be honest, man, because maybe I'm being a little simple minded on this, but there's a lot of you know. I did some research recently, and it's discussing. The, the people that are starving in our, just America and it's, it's the homeless in America is somewhere like 500, 600,000 individuals and they have no like food source. But then there's something like the millions of wild boar legitimately destroying the ecosystem. 
I don't see no, why. Yeah. How are we not killing these things in at mass for sport and feeding the homeless? I don't, they're, they're, those are and another example here. You were in law enforcement a long time, right? Uh, yeah. If we had mil, uh, alien technology that used sound waves that could render someone unconscious, right? Think of how mm-hmm. many law enforcement mishaps would not happen again. Oh, there's technology. Adam, I'm sure there's technology that could be used for law enforcement that would be much more humane and better than what we're doing. By a mile. But it's all, it's locked up. I mean, you know, there are certain things like they use sound wave. doesn't hurt you, but um, they have it, but they haven't miniaturized it where an individual officer, but if he has a person that's unruly, there's a certain sound wave they could project at him doesn't hurt him but at that moment in time it makes him so uncomfortable you know he'll go to his knees but you don't have to then shoot him well or, i mean if you want you know, i watched a show vehicle. i watched a show called future weapons a long time ago mm-hmm. uh, decade ago better and on that show they had a i want to say it was a percussion so it, uh, it was a weaponized sound machine of some sort <laughs> Yeah, I and, know exactly what you're, a big round dome kind yeah, of Yeah, and they could actually adjust frequency, so it, mm-hmm. I mean, it could overwhelm your brain, just knock you out, period. Right. Or it could it could amp it up and collapse your lungs if they want to use lethally. Mm-hmm. I, I, and I, this is over a decade ago. How? And by now, by now, we should have had something to put in place for that, where, again, incidents where there's these, the, the police were shootings, that's gone. It is not someone, yeah, you're right, it's not. It, because it's not profitable for because a police department can't afford that. Where, well, they can afford the big ones, but to miniaturize it would cost a lot of, a lot of, look, Probably Adam, you right. and I both know, we both agree on one thing. Corporations are greedy. They want to make money. And if they don't see a profit, they don't work on it. I don't care if it's a pharmaceutical company, a weapons company, uh, a technology company, whatever it is, they look at the dollar signs. How much money is this going to make? Are we going to put the money toward research and development for this? Not because of the betterment of humankind, or it's the betterment of the corporation making a whole lot of money. Yeah, I agree with you. It's sad. I mean, it really it's it's a it's it's unfortunate. We don't think at a different level, but you're right. I mean, until till we till more Elon step up and find more ways to be both profitable and and ex, you know help expel or at least at the very minimum help humanity thrive better at the very minimum just do a little bit better you know we need more of that but you know till then yeah it's just like like pharmaceutical companies and that's i i i'm not a big uh expert in pharmaceutical companies but i do know that they look at profit margins yeah absolutely do we put money toward this and try to find a cure for it or if it's better that we um take this and get a treatment for it which is would be more profitable i said this a long time ago if you cured if you cured cancer you right now you got when you're in your living room made the cure for cancer and and told anyone they would kill you because they go that or they buy it and then lock it in a vault yeah, they, they which got, is what they did would remember years ago back in the well i don't know if you remember in the 70s people were making unbelievable carburetors that could go 50, 60 miles to a gallon. They they actually built those things years and years ago. And what had happened? The motor companies bought them. Yeah, said, that sounds about right. Because then, then yeah. you think about it, then gas would, yeah, that's that sounds right. You know, it's, it's again, it's it's sad to say, but it's, it's truth. It's the way it yeah, is. Yeah, you're an inventor. You put $10,000, $20,000 into building something, and somebody comes in and says, hey, we're going to pay you $10 million for that. I mean, some guy goes, okay, here you go, but you can never make this, you know, in the contract. I'm sure it says you can never make this again. You're not to talk to anybody about it. There's a non-disclosure agreements. Here's your $10 million. And then they put it somewhere where it's never seen. Yep, and then you know the 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 gas companies make their threats, obviously, right? Yeah, I mean, so, can you imagine if you walked into the U.S. Patent Office and see all the incredible things that have probably been invented that are not out on the market? It's endless. That's a fact. Endless. Yeah. There's crazy ideas coming out all the time. Can you imagine if somebody turned around and said, "You know what? The hell with this. You know, to better uh, mankind, we're going to let this stuff out." 
Well, the good news about I'm telling you, can you imagine the lawsuits and the people screaming and hollering everything? That'd be pandemonium. I mean, because there's stuff that the patent office probably holds, inventions that will never see the light of day because it's not profitable or it's going to hurt somebody else's profit. Right. And they're going to wait for certain people to perish before they release them, which is another silly fact. Mm. Before we close, um, what I guess we're going to ask is, what's one particular case you worked on, UFO-related, that had you a little worried, concerned? Worried or concerned? I, I ask this because most everyone I asked, uh, not so much about a fantastic, but the ones that worried or concerned you. And and I say that because when I get in the field and investigate and, and document, those are things I kind of want to keep in the back of my mind. All right, three of them. There's three of them that were in concern. You want the the real worst ones or the the you want to go from the biggest to the lowest on the three or what? You pick. You pick start first. the lowest first. Okay. The lowest was the uh, case of the per person who, uh, as a child, she actually was not abducted, but her mother was had an encounter and she was a baby in the aliens. Uh, the grays, who were actually grays, um, were there at her crib. And she has had uh, some encounters, but the thing is, she's been getting these dreams. Now, she's not a military person. She's not a person who reads anything about wars or anything like that. But she has been seen, um, at, it started, I think, around 14, 15 years old. She has been getting dreams dreams of a devastating war here on this planet. And, but here's the thing. Other people have had the same dreams who have had encounters and they're similar dreams. Like a collective consciousness. And stuff. So you're, you're saying to yourself, well, you hear about one dream that, that how it plays out. Okay. But then you hear somebody else who they don't know each other, but the dream is very similar in, in a lot of aspects because you got to break it down and see what they're, you know, what they remember of the dream. And that's the other thing. Their dream to them is so real and so conscious that they remember a lot of it. That's number one. Number two is the um, police officer who watched a triangle hover over uh, this lake, drop a barrel in barrel sized object into the lake. And now that lake has had weird things starting to happen. For instance, there's algae blooms that are that are uh, going in there. And we took a water sample. We can't find any nitrates or phosphates uh, there. And the algae bloom isn't on the shores. It's in the almost in the middle of the lake. Oh. And here's the most amazing thing. There's a circle that does not have that bloom. This The circle does not ever get frozen. Right around the circle gets frozen. But that circle right there at the there. That's still that's like that presently. Yeah. Well, what, 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 what? I guess what, what lake would that be? Because I would. Be I'll one tell of you off the air. Okay, that's fine. And stuff. And maybe you and I will go down and take a look at it together. Yeah, I'll keep it discreet. I want to. I, I want to learn. I want to know. Yeah, and then the third case is I helped a guy work a case in Florida where I interviewed uh, this person and. And this has popped up, and it's kind of kept quiet, but it has popped up, is that they're starting to get abductees coming back, remembering a consciousness of seeing human body parts on these crafts. And we never got reports like that years ago, but we're starting to get reports of that now. Whoa. Like they're trying to figure out a way to, to build their own almost, right? I, they, we don't know. I mean, they just said we've seen human body parts. That blows me away. Well, Chris, I enjoyed having you on a lot. Well, thanks, Adam. I enjoyed being here. We're going to do it again. Most definitely. Um, if there's anything you want, is there anything you want to put on air for people to, for any advertising or anything like that? Well, just that uh, MUFON Radio is coming to KGRA. If guys or people who like the paranormal will listen to KGRA, myself, Katie Cook, who's a star of country music television, oh, nice. she is going to be one of the hosts, myself, and Katie Grabowski, who's the state director of Colorado, 
We are going to give you the latest information on unidentified flying objects all over the United States, actually all over the world, because MUFON goes all over the world. And uh, it'll be a, almost like a, a news report on the latest things happening in UFOs. I'll definitely tune in. Fact. Thanks, Adam. All right, Chris, I thank you again, sir. We will do this again, I promise you. All right. Have a good night, sir. Have a good night, Adam.